What's up? This is T Briz from Trust Beats. If you're watching this video, you might already know what the FL Studio FPC is, but if not, here's a quick simplified definition. The FL Studio FPC is basically a drum machine influenced by the Akai MPC that makes it easy to create, edit, and swap drum kits on the fly. I'm gonna show you a quick sample of the final product. This is what we wanna achieve in today's tutorial. When you start a new project, it looks like this, right? What I wanna do is go to File, New from Template. Here's the T-Briz FPC template. I click that, I load it up. I've got my one FPC channel where I can arrange all of my drums from one place, my kicks, snare, hi-hats, shakers, whatever is in my FPC. I'll show you really quick. Here's the FPC and all the sounds that I've got mapped to the pads, the digital virtual pads. And down here, I have each individual percussion element mapped to a different mixer track. So I have all my elements separated. Let's play it and see what it looks like. See that kick, snare, ah, tambourine. On top of that, each of those elements is routed to a group track, the group drums here, so I can control my drum kit volume as a whole from this one fader, which comes in very handy. If you ever find your entire drum kit's too loud and you have to lower the kick, lower the snare, lower the high, lower, 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 lower everything, what a pain in that, you know what. <laughs> That's why I do this with the group drums. And look at that, it's all set up. As soon as you come in here, you are just ready to start arranging your drums and, and whatnot. On top of that, the FPC allows you to save these drum kits and load these drum kits so you can create kits and have them accessible just from this one plugin. It's amazing, I love this. This is just a great way to save time in your workflow. That's what we wanna work with today. The FPC is very versatile. I've used it for drum kits, bass lines, one-shot instruments, sample chops, et cetera, et cetera. But today we are gonna focus on using it for drum kits and we'll create an FL Studio project template with the FPC all set up and ready to go. Additionally, as my contribution to you for watching this video and supporting this channel, please like and subscribe. The final FLP project is down in the description for you to download and use. I made this with FL Studio version 20.8. Not sure how it's going to work with older versions, newer versions, but it's down there. And if it's not compatible with your version of FL Studio, no problem. Just watch this video and build it as we go and build your own. Okay, that's enough for the intro. Let's get into the tutorial. We got a blank project started. Let's go add the FPC to our channel rack. FPC. All right, the FPC loads up with all the default instruments. I'm not gonna be reviewing the FPC in depth right now. There's another video out there that I watched of somebody doing this. Uh, if I can, I'll link it down in the description. He does a great job. Um, but what, what all I really want to focus on is setting this up for my template the way I need to use it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. Just a quick side note. These drums and the, all these drum sounds are playable through a MIDI controller. For instance, I have a keyboard set up right here. So I can actually play these drums just like this on my keyboard. And if you have an MPC controller that has their pads laid out exactly as these digital pads are laid out, you can play the drums from there as well. Since what I want to do is set this up for my custom kits, my hip hop kits, we're just going to reset this. And so let's clear this out. So we go to presets, empty. Now we have all these empty pads, a blank canvas for us to work with. And we want to start adding drum sounds. I'm going to start building a drum kit. Let's start with the basics of a drum kit. For me, that's the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, and the open hi-hat. Let's throw these on here first. I'm going to go over to my browser and find some drum sounds that I like. And I'm just going to drag that drum sound right into here. This is my kick slot. When I showed the default drum kit that showed up here, there were some drums that were placed on certain pads for a reason. It has to do with the way those pads link up to a MIDI keyboard. Specifically, this, the hi-hat, the kick, and the snare are in certain places on the keyboard that corresponded to where they were on this FPC pad. So I'm going to just try to lay those out. But you can put them in any order you want if you're doing this on your own. I got my snare. I got my hi-hat. 
and I got an open eye hat. So far, it's that simple. Dragging and dropping the sounds you want onto the pads where you want them. Okay, now just real quick, I'll show you. I can play that on the keyboard. Magic. I love it. We are going to fill in the rest of these pads, but first, let's do a little bit of organization here. I'm going to click my kick pad. I'm going to come up to this box. I'm going to right click it. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be talking about this from a Windows perspective. Uh, whatever the Mac equivalent is of these types of things, I'm not so sure of, but you guys are smart, and I know that you'll be able to figure that out. Let's do kick here. Let's change the color. Why not? I'll just make it red, light coral. Let's do... Oh, you know what? Let's also change the icon to the kick icon. Boom, we got our kick. Same thing, snare. Click the snare. Right click up here. Name it to snare. Let's change the color on that. How about blue? Light sky blue. Thanks FL Studio for these beautiful colors. Let's throw the snare icon on it as well. Now we got a kick and a snare. We want the hat. This is the closed high hat. So I just call that HH for high hat. Let's change that color. I don't really care. Uh, how about green? Or khaki. Let's change it to khaki. Okay, and there's an icon for the closed hi-hat as well. This one is closed, I believe. To me it is. There's hi-hat. And now we got the open hi-hat. Let's right-click that. O-H-H -H for open hi-hat. Let's change that also to khaki. I love that khaki color. I really do. How about this uh, open hi-hat icon? We got the basics set up. I love this already. All right, there's one thing now that I want to set up as well while we have the basic drum kit parts here. Um, open hi-hat and hi-hat. You know how an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat works. If you hit the open hi-hat and then you hit the closed hi-hat, it should cut the open hi-hat off immediately. If you can hear it right now, it's not happening. So I want to set that up. So let's put the click on the open hi-hat. Let's put it in a cut group of zero. See this right here? Cut zero. And let's click the hi-hat. And we'll put that in the group of zero as well. Now these are in a cut group. I've put them in the same group, but now I also have to click open hi-hat and tell it what to cut by. So I want it to cut by zero. So it's getting cut by the hi-hat now. Let's see. There you go. It's cutting it off. Perfect. Uh, really, the open hi-hat and the hi-hat are the only two slots I do this with because I try to keep it as simple as possible. But if you need that for any other instruments, that's how you do it. So basically, now we're at a position where we know how to drag instruments to the FPC. We know how to rename and color them and add them to cut groups if you want. So I'm going to sort of fast forward here. I'm going to drag a percussion element into every FPC slot that we can see here. I'm gonna name it, I'm gonna color it if I want to, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, I dragged in all my sound files, I renamed everything to match the type of sound that I have on it, made it nice and organized. I don't really care about the color as much, um, the kick, the snare, and the hi-hats, I got colored out, but the rest of it is pretty much auxiliary as far as I'm concerned and for this tutorial, so we're just gonna leave it the way it is. I guess I could just go through these really quick. Sticks, kicks, hi-hat, reverse cymbal, tambourine, open hi-hat, snare, snare perk, which is like a secondary snare, jingle, crash, clap, hi-hat too. I like to double up my hi-hats sometimes to give a, my beat some bounce. Ride cymbal, drum shots, and shakers. Not that you care, but that's what's on here. So let's close this out now. Uh, let's clean up these channels. I don't need this. Let's get rid of these. So I just got rid of four of them. And now I have 12 percussion tracks set up in here. So let's rename this to FPC. Let's give it a color to stay organized. Let's accept that color. And then let's give it an icon. I like this. It looks like a drum machine. <clears throat> There's my FPC. Let's take this and throw it on track one. I'm going to right click track one, channel routing, route selected channels to this track. That way it grabs the icon and the color and the name and beautiful. Love that shortcut. 
Let me show you what we're talking about in the piano roll. You see this? My kick, stick, snare, snare perk, hi-hat, everything is right here. So I am creating my drums in one piano roll as opposed to multiple piano rolls. So here's a quick example. Let's get some hi-hats on here. Let's get some kicks on here. Oh, that tempo's too fast. What do we do? Let's do 88. 88 MPHs. You see that? Now I can create my drum arrangements inside of one piano roll. Some of you might be thinking at this point, yeah, but I lose a lot of the functionality that I get when my kick is in a single piano roll. Like you can put the kick on different notes, basically pitch it up or pitch it down. But we have controls for that kind of stuff in here. If we come down here, I can change, I can change the pitch of each individual note. Or if I wanted to highlight each one of those, I could go like this and then I can hold alt and scroll up. Hear that kick? So really, instead of working, there's a way for me to do everything I was able to do when the drums are separated out onto multiple channels. I can do that stuff also in here in my FPC setup. It's just a different workflow. I've found a way to do everything I've wanted to do with the drums after getting them into this FPC setup. I haven't hit a wall of a limitation that stopped me from doing anything or any ideas that I've had in my head. Um, if you have anything to contribute to that, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. I think it would be a great uh, discussion topic and possible debate. All right. Now, with that being said, let's move on and move on with this template. So, all right, the drums are playing, right? Look where they're going. All the drums are going to the FPC slot, right? For me, that's a problem. I need to control my kick, my snare, my hi-hats. I need to control all of those elements as far as adding effects to them separately, EQing them separately, panning them out separately. I don't want them all on this one track right here. So now we're going to set up this FPC so that each single one of these gets routed to its own mixer track. And it's very easy to do. I'm going to order these the way I want to order them. Feel free to do this however you like, but this is just for my, like, I want my kick to be first. So I'm, I'm hitting my kick. It's showing up on the FPC mixer lane down here on track one in the mixer window. Um, I want that kick to be on its own mixer track. So we come over here to output and we change that to one. Now look where it shows up. It shows up one track after the FPC track. Perfect. What about the snare? I want that to show up after the kick. All right, it shows up here. Let's go to output. Let's change the snare to two. Now the snare shows up two away from that FPC. Hi-hat, let's make that three away. One, two, three. And it'll show up on insert four now. Open hi-hat. One, two, three, four. There you go. I'm going to rename these and color them to match really quick. All right, let's play the drums and we should see all of our. There you go. This is perfect because now if I wanted to turn the kick down, I can. I can turn it down, I can add effects, I can compress it. Same thing with the snare high. Everything is now controllable separately. So now I can arrange it all from one place, but now when I'm mixing, I have full control over each individual element. Exactly what I want. So now I want to take every single one of these drum pads that we have in the FPC and route them to their own individual mixer tracks, or as they call them here in uh, FL Studio, these inserts. So what I'm going to do from this point out, it's the same concept that we just did, except we're just going to do it for every one of these. So let's do that now. Okay, we've got all these mapped out. So if I were to play this, you can see every single one of our mixer tracks is getting some volume there. 
because every single one of our instruments is playing because of the way we have it set up in here, just, just for test purposes. That's, that's what I like to do to test things. One thing I do want to do is color all of these to match again. Next thing. All right, so I'm going to create a drum group so I can control the overall level of the entire drum kit from one fader. I'm sure there's a quick way to do some of the things that I'm about to do. If there is, leave them in the comments section. Help me out. Help, help everybody else out. And then I'll use those tricks in future videos. Uh, but for right now, we're going to rename this. I like to put my groups in red <laughs> or brown. <laughs> it looks red to me. Maybe I need... Uh, maybe I'm colorblind no then everything would look brown <sighs> anyway getting distracted group grp g drum here's group drums this is how i like to do my groups and it's red first things first let's even though the fpc doesn't have any instruments or shouldn't have any instruments coming through this mixer track track one we're going to route it to group drums anyway just because. Uh, so let's move the kick, take it off the master, move it to our group. Snare, pull it off the master, move it to our group. Hi-hat, pull it off the master, move it to our group. You see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna fast forward through the rest of these and do every single one of these inserts just like this. All right, quick uh, quality control check. Let's just arrow through all these and make sure they're all connected to the group now and yes they are there's the group drums going to the master here we do a little play you know what now might be a good time to get rid of all of this test crap let's delete that and let's just go back and let's put let's put some drums in here great now this is a good setup this is a good setup. This is this is the basic. This is where I started with my FPC setup. This is the basics of what I wanted to do. Because now every time I start a new project, I have this all set up, and I have a and I have a plugin where I can save this drum kit I created by going up here and going to save preset as, and then saving it in my list of presets here. Then later. I can do presets and I can load those presets back in. So you can create multiple drum kits. For me, it's a huge time saver. I love working like this. Oh, right. One last thing. I got to show you how to save this template. Uh, if you don't already know, let's go to file. You go to save as. You'll have to find your image line application folder. For me, in Windows, it's under the C drive. It's in program files. It's in image line. FL Studio 20, data, templates. Okay, then you have a bunch of folders here. You can make your own folder. I have a folder called tutorials, and that's where I save this template, the Tbris FPC template. And we save it right there. After you save that template, close FL Studio, open it back up. And when you go to file, new from template, you will see the template you created shows up right here. And guess what happens when we do that? File new from template, FPC template. There you go. It opened up. All this stuff is already done for us. All right. So we got a pretty decent basic beginning setup for the FPC. So I think I'm going to end it here. Let me know in the comments section, like the video, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. If you hate the video and you never want me to make a video again, also leave a comment about that. Tell me how much I suck. It's all right. Uh, I can handle it. I can take the criticism. Uh, appreciate it if you made it this far through the video. Also in the description, find a link to Trust Beats, which is the production team that I am a part of. If you want to hear the beats that I make and the other people on our production team make, go check out Trust Beats. Links in the description, yada, yada, yada. I appreciate you. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody.